Well, hello there, and welcome to Friday, December 18th, 2020. This is Cord Cutting Weekly, where we wrap up the past week in cord cutting and streaming news. And as always, thank you for joining us. This week, we've got some pretty big news, finally, from Roku and HBO Max. Apple TV coming to the Chromecast early in the new year. Peacock's 2021 plans, and more. But first, yes, of course, if you haven't done so already, we certainly wouldn't mind if you clicked on those like and subscribe buttons down below. You'd be joining a pretty active and passionate community here, and you're more than welcome to join in. And with that all being said, let's jump right into the news, starting with something a lot of folks have been waiting a while for. Okay, first off, yes, it's finally happened. Around seven months or so after its initial launch and a month after it landed on Fire TV, the HBO Max app is now officially on the Roku platform. The announcement was made on Wednesday, and you should see the app available for download on Roku devices as of yesterday, December 17th. And of course, we've been tracking the will-they-won't-they they saga of HBO Max and Roku pretty much ever since the streaming service launched back in May. And now, here in December, the two sides have finally come to an agreement. And the announcement helps punctuate what has been an impressively busy few weeks for HBO Max. In fact, there's been so much going on of late, we decided to do a whole video discussing it earlier this week. So if you haven't done so already, we've got a link to this week's video down below in the video description, as well as up here in the corner as well. And speaking of HBO Max, the streaming service also landed on Sony's PlayStation 5 console this week, adding to the new console's gradually expanding streaming lineup. This week also saw the release of the CBS News app on the console, bringing the total available streaming apps to 22 so far for the month-old machine. And if you want a deeper look at how Sony's PlayStation 5 and Microsoft's Xbox Series S and Series X fare as streaming devices, be sure to check out our earlier video exploring the new game consoles. Overall, this new generation of hardware is more than capable of providing a pleasant streaming experience, although there have been some quirks so far, including, say, the lack of 4K playback on the PS5's Disney Plus app. To be fair, though, these are game consoles first and foremost, but we do remain optimistic that more features and more streaming apps in general will be headed their way over time. And hopefully by then, it'll be a lot easier to buy one. In other streaming app news, this week we learned that the Apple TV app will be coming to Google's new Chromecast with Google TV early next year. And that also means Chromecast users will have access to Apple's streaming service known as Apple TV+. And with the inclusion of the Apple TV app, that will make the new Chromecast, which we reviewed recently, one of the few devices to support all the major streaming services. At the moment, there's no word on an exact launch date, but we'll certainly let you know once we learn more. And in case you're wondering, yes, the Apple TV app is expected to reach other Android TV-powered devices in the future as well, starting again with the Chromecast with Google TV. Next up, we've got still more channels coming to Pluto TV. This week, the free streaming service is adding a few new options, including one dedicated to holiday-themed episodes from classic TV shows. That channel goes by the name Pluto TV Christmas, and you can find it on channel 250. And after Christmas Day, the channel will continue airing holiday content through the new year, and you can expect shows like Family Ties, Happy Days, The Love Boat, and more. Elsewhere, Pluto TV is also adding three more channels to the lineup. There's Classica, which features classical performances, operas, ballets, and more. And you can also check out the One Piece anime series on, what else, the One Piece channel. And then finally, there's the Comedy Central Animation Channel, which includes a range of animated shows, including Beavis and Butthead, Daria, Drawn Together, and more. And of course, you can find out more info on the new channels in the link down below in the video description. And in other streaming service news, Peacock released a preview of what's coming to the service in the year 2021. Of course, one of the new additions headlining Peacock's early plans is The Office, which is leaving Netflix at the end of this month. But beyond that, the service has laid out more of what to expect, including the continuation of the 80s sitcom Punky Brewster, including the original Punky herself, Soleil Moon Fry. Peacock will also offer Bel Air, which takes the premise of the beloved sitcom The Fresh Prince of Bel Air and reworks it into more dramatic hour-long episodes. Will Smith is on board as an executive producer, and Westbrook Studios, which was co-founded by Jada Pinkett Smith and Will Smith, will co-produce the series. And yes, you can check out more in-depth previews of what's coming to Peacock over at our full post linked again down below in the video description. And speaking of Peacock, again, one of the biggest shows coming to the streaming service is, of course, The Office. And this week, we learned more about how exactly the show will be offered on the service once it leaves Netflix and makes the move to Peacock. And so all 201 episodes will indeed be available on Peacock. The first two seasons will be available on the service's free tier, but fans wanting full access to the entire series will need to sign up for either Peacock Premium at $4.99 per month or Premium with no ads at $9.99 per month. And beyond the standard episodes, Peacock is promising extended cuts, deleted scenes, and more content for superfans looking for more from their favorite show. 
And again, The Office is coming to Peacock starting on January 1st, and the first batch of new footage and deleted scenes should start arriving at launch, with more being released over time. And of course, all that leads me to ask, if you're an Office super fan out there, are you considering a move to Peacock to keep streaming the show, or have you done so already? Feel free to let us know in the comment section down below. And now returning to Roku for a bit this week, the company removed the Spectrum app from its lineup while the two sides work on a new contract. The previous contract expired without a new agreement in place, so in the meantime, the app will be unavailable for download. That being said, current customers should not be affected if they already have the app downloaded, so this is strictly for new folks looking for the app. Both sides say they've been working on a new contract, but for now, if you've been looking for the Spectrum app in the Roku marketplace and been wondering where it went, well, there you go. And of course, we'll continue to monitor contract talks and keep you updated as we learn more. In movie news, AMC Theater said it needs to raise some $750 million in cash if it wants to remain viable through 2021. The company has filed with the SEC to sell up to 200 million shares in order to free up some cash. AMC estimates that in order to stay afloat, it would need movie theater attendance to rise to around 20% of pre-COVID levels in the early part of next year, and around 85% by the second half of next year. Of course, a whole, whole lot of things remain up in the air as far as the future goes, and it's clear AMC's challenging 2020 will extend into the new year, and we'll continue to track the movie industry and the movie theater industry as we head into 2021. And by the way, I know we talked at length about Disney's big news day on last Friday's show, but earlier this week we listed out a long, long, long list of titles expected to arrive on the streaming channel in the near future. So if you want to learn more about what to expect for the future of Disney+, Plus, you'll find a link to that post down below in the video description. And then finally this week, just a quick reminder that if you're still searching for that perfect cord cutting or streaming gift for a friend or family member, we've got a whole bunch of recommendations and gift guides over at Cord Cutters News. So if it feels like you're running low on time and could use some expert advice, we'll have a link to our holiday streaming deals section down below again in the video description. And that brings us to the end of an eventful week of cord cutting and streaming news. And a real quick programming note, next Friday is, well, it's the premiere of Wonder Woman 1984, but it's also Christmas Day, and we won't have our typical episode next Friday. We will, however, still sum up all the biggest stories next week via post, so be sure to be on the lookout for that around the same time as our usual episode. And with that all being said, thank you so much for tuning in, not just today, but throughout the year. I know 2020 has been a year chock full of change and challenges, but we here at Core Cutters News appreciate you all supporting the channel, and we look forward to an even bigger and brighter 2021. And yes, I can't leave without saying if you haven't done so already, please do consider clicking the like and subscribe buttons down below and maybe the bell icon as well. That way you won't miss out on all the content we publish throughout the year, including live Q&As, topical deep dives, and of course, Cord Cutting Weekly. For now though, I hope you all have a wonderful and safe time during the holiday season. My name is Philip Lerman. Thanks again for watching. Take care.